So welcome class again. This is question six of uh, PPM uh, August 2022. Explain the meaning of democratic leadership style. Democratic leadership style. This is a style where uh, you allow people to voice their opinion, voice their opinion, to, to have their views. Everybody's views matters. Everybody's views matters. So give people a chance to participate in the decision making uh, process. When you give people a chance, a chance to participate in the decision making process, then we say that is democratic leadership style. You don't just make decisions by your own self, but involve them, allow them to participate in that decision making process. Uh, we say that that is democratic style of leadership. So, uh, that was just two marks. Number two, analyze three demerits of democratic leadership style. The demerits, it's uh, time consuming. Because these people sometimes end up arguing, sometimes they have to come to a consensus, and in the process, uh, the decision making becomes very slow. The decision making process becomes very slow. There are so many processes, people have to agree, people have to disagree, to agree, you know. And in the process, it becomes so time-consuming and uh, unnecessarily uh, slow. And because of that, it's not effective. Not effective in crisis. During crisis, it's not effective. Uh, chances are very high that you will fail if you are going to waste a lot of time discussing on what to do and what not to to do uh, the other uh, the merit is that in most cases it encourages uh, it em encourages procrastination especially when people disagree when people disagree or don't agree the easiest option is to push it forward so when you push it forward again it simply comes back to the issue of uh, wasting time and slow decision uh, making. And then uh, it also might at least to some uh, kind of uh, rejection, some kind of rejection, especially if you form the minority. A, a rejection, especially if you form the minority, the minority. Because in most cases, for democratic uh, democratic style of leadership, the majority will take the day. The minority will feel rejected. So that is a feeling that will remain in them and might even go a long way in demotivating uh, these employees. So it might make them feel devalued, make them feel demotivated. I think we can talk about that demotivation. It can demotivate the, the employees. And then uh, it is also not good when the kind of people we are dealing with are not so much, uh, their interest is not so much on the organization. You know, people whose interest is not on the, be on the best interest of the organization. If those are the kind of people we are dealing with, then majority, the majority decision can be a wrong decision can be a wrong decision and if this is what we are talking about then it means you are heading in the wrong direction so democratic style of leadership can easily lead you to a wrong path especially if people don't share the interests of the organization or they don't have the best interests of the organization at heart uh, then the other one is uh it might not go so well with the leaders. It might not, not. It might expose some weaknesses. Might expose leadership weakness. Leadership weakness. Generally, a leader, you know, a leader, you are supposed to be equipped with so many styles of leadership. You know, so if you say that you are just going to go the democratic way, sometimes. The situation at hand doesn't require the democratic style of leadership. But because you have uh, 
you've uh, uh, you know you've uh, uh, made these people believe that you know that is all that is how you do things it might actually expose the wrong side of you, the, the weaker side of you and uh, might not give room for the other style of cells of leadership also to rule the day like dictatorship dictatorship is not bad if the situation calls for dictatorship then you need to go for dictatorship if the situation calls for licensure then go for licensure so if people are so much entitled to the democratic style of leadership they might not give the leaders room for any other style of leadership and that becomes dangerous to the leader uh, so that is also one of the demerits just pick any four points any three then discuss three six strategies that a manager could apply to increase employee productivity in an organization wow it's a very good question discuss six strategies that a manager could apply to, to increase employee productivity train them training and capacity building so that the employees know what they are supposed to do with a high level of accuracy that is very important and then uh, uh, objectives clear objectives i think let's talk about uh, clear objectives to all the employees uh, clear objectives make sure that objectives are very clear so that all the employees know what they are expected to deliver at the end of the day yeah clear objectives targets and deliverables i think we can put it like that and then we can also talk of appraisal performance appraisal performance appraisal this is to measure the performance of the employees employees will tend to perform better when their their their, their performance is measured others if they are not measured uh, they might there might be some kind of a uh, laxity then motivation there are so many ways to motivate the employees the organization might want to think of uh, how to motivate to lift the morale to lift the morale or keep the morale you know of the employees we might also talk of uh, embracing or adoption of technology adoption of technology technology goes a long way in enhancing or easening the work of the employees and making it even faster and better so the organization might think of uh, supporting the employees with the necessary tools and technology that is required of them to deliver best results then we also talk of uh, time management the organization should also support the employees uh, especially on time management and this we are talking about things like uh, not necessarily not wasting a lot of time on meetings this, uh, sometimes some of these organizations call meetings unnecessarily you know so those are some of the things that will hinder employee productivity because employees spend a lot of time on meetings instead of delivering or doing what they are supposed to be doing so time management techniques very important the organization can also work on uh, the culture of the organization like you know making things very fast in the organization there are some organizations that are very slow very slow so can you come up with a way of uh, improving the culture of the organization so that we talk about a learning organization we talk about a fast organization we talk about an entrepreneurial organization so that people can think of ways outside the normal on how to get quicker results quicker and better results that way there are high chances that we are going to improve the productivity so can we enhance the, the culture of the organization and talk about entrepreneurial culture a learning culture a fast moving culture you know those are some of the things that can uh, help the organization improve uh, on its productivity let's have a uh, uh, teamwork teamwork generally we say that as one person yes you can do much but when you are together when you are working together we can accomplish quite a lot if we want to achieve 
high level productivity in an organization can we go for uh, teamwork teamwork will take us places let's go for teamwork that one will assure us uh, places so this is just they want six strategies. We have so many strategies. Let's just, these are eight. Pick any six here and we'll be good to go. So, thank you. Let's meet in the next uh, question.